So the valuation question that's raised by risk and uncertainty is how do we value situations that are risky? Or how do we value situations that are characterized by uncertainty? If the odds are unknown, you can ask people what their subjective odds are. So they're not objective in the sense that they're scientific. And objective odds would be odds that that were objectively correct, and you could, if somebody didn't agree with me, you could prove that they were wrong. Subjective odds are the opposite of objective. They're just a matter of personal opinion. So whether the odds come from, whether the odds are objective or subjective, the question is, given odds, how, how is an, a probabilistic outcome valued? The simplest one one can think of is this one here. Suppose you have, or one of the simplest ones. Suppose you have a one-half chance of getting a dollar and a one-half chance of getting two dollars. And you can think of this as asking different people, how much would they be willing to pay for getting this, getting a one-half chance of getting a dollar or one-half chance of getting two dollars? Or since you know, we know there's a difference between willingness to pay and willingness to accept, if, um, if I told you that you couldn't get the opportunity to have one half chance of a dollar and one half chance of two dollars, then how much money would you accept in compensation for not being able to have that opportunity? Now, from statistics, we know of something called the expected value. And the expected value of this, now, um, Economists use the word lottery. To describe really any kind of probabilistic outcome. So economists use the word lottery in a much, much broader context than in everyday language. So in, in the language of economics, this is a lottery with a one half chance of paying off a dollar and a one half chance of paying off two dollars. A statistician would tell you that the expected value of this lottery is a dollar and fifty cents. And the way it's calculated is you take the probability of the first outcome times the payoff if the first outcome occurs, and you add that to the probability of the second outcome times the the payoff if the second outcome occurs. In other words, the expected value in general, so abbreviation of expected value is EV, is the sum, this is the summation sign, of the probability of, let's say, event I, multiplied by the payoff if event I occurs, summed over all the different events. So this is, not a, this is not an economic idea. This is a mathematical idea, the expected value. You didn't need an economist to calculate expected value. Any statistician will tell you what the expected value of a lottery, of a lottery is. And the expected value of this lottery is $1.50. Now, here comes the economic question. Would people really would be willing to pay a dollar and fifty cents for the chance to play this lottery? And I think just a little bit of introspection reveals that it depends on whom you ask. There's some people that economists call risk averse who would not be willing to pay would not be willing to pay a dollar and fifty cents to to play this lottery. They might be willing to pay a dollar and twenty-five cents or a dollar and ten cents, but they wouldn't be willing to pay a dollar fifty. In fact, we define risk aversion as people who would be willing to pay less than the expected value of a lottery in order to play the lottery. Risk loving is the opposite. These people would be willing to pay more than a dollar fifty to get a chance to to play this lottery, because they really like games of chance. They they enjoy being in risky situations. They might be willing to pay a dollar and sixty cents for 
for this lottery or, or even a dollar and seventy cents. We define people as risk neutral if they are willing to pay exactly a dollar fifty. Uh, in other words, if they were forced to pay more than a dollar fifty, they they wouldn't go for it. But any price less than a dollar fifty, they'll accept. So they would pay a dollar fifty in order to pay this lottery. So we call these people risk neutral. And it seems like economics has to have some kind of theory for how people value lottery that goes beyond expected value because expected value just says it's a dollar fifty and therefore expected value doesn't take into account that there are some people that are risk averse and some people that are risk loving expected value only correctly predicts the value of a lottery to somebody who's risk neutral the risk neutral pe person will say yeah it's, it's worth a dollar fifty which is the expected value but the risk averse person won't and the risk-loving person won't. So the first reason to think that economists need to go beyond the statistician's notion of expected value is because economists really do want to describe the behavior of risk-averse people and the behavior of risk-loving people. Because most people, frankly, are either risk-averse or risk-loving. Um, some people are risk-neutral, but not a whole lot. Again, because risk neutrality is it's kind of a knife edge. It's exactly a dollar and fifty cents that risk for risk neutral people to value this lottery. If it's a dollar forty nine or a dollar fifty one, they're not risk neutral anymore. There's another reason why okay, so that's one reason why expected value seems to be incomplete for an economist. An economist who want to go beyond expected value as you know it would we want some other kind of some additional concept to describe how risk averse and risk loving people value lotteries and there's another reason why expected value is not a very good way for would not be a good way for economists to describe the way people value lotteries and this is illustrated by an example called the saint petersburg paradox let me turn to this. Okay, so this comes from an exam, uh, spring 2017, exam one, the St. Petersburg Paradox. This is uh, St. Petersburg in Russia, and the Soviet times were called Leningrad. So let me read the question. And by the way, uh, I, I, I discussed this in lectures before, so this is not this question was not the first time the students were seeing this situation. Suppose one plays a lottery in which a fair coin is tossed. A fair coin means that it lands heads 50% of the time and tails 50% of the time. And one's payoff increases with the number of times heads, H, comes up before, before the first tail, T, is tossed, at which point the game ends. So for example, if um, if the sequence is heads, heads, tails, then the payoff is not as good as if the sequence is heads, 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 tails. And in particular, I'm going to describe the payoffs as following. This is the number of heads that occur before the first tail. The first row is zero heads occur before the first tail. So the very first coin flip is a tail. Let's say the payoff is $2 if that happens. And that happens with probability one half because in the first flip, it's a half half whether it's heads or tails. The next row is the number, suppose that the number of heads before the first tails is one. So the coin flips are heads and tail. And then the game stops because it stops after the first tail. The probability of that is a quarter because you have to have a, a, a head on the first flip and a tail on the second. Let's suppose that the way this game is designed, the payoff of that happens is $4. And I want to describe the rest of the payoff column. You get $8 if there were two heads before the first tail. 
You get $16 if they were three heads before the first tail. You get $32 if they were four heads before the first tail. You get $64 if they were five heads before the first tail. And it goes on forever. So that's the game. Question. What is its expected value? Well, to calculate expected value, the EV column, remember the formula we had from before? The expected value is the sum of the probability of event i times the payoff if event i occurs summed over i. Well, we have the probabilities and we have the payoffs. The probability times the payoff is this column here, probability times payoff. Now, look at the first row. The probability is 1 half, the payoff is 2. 1 half times 2 is 1. Look at the second row. The probability is 1 quarter, the payoff is 4. Probability times the payoff is 1 quarter times 4, which is 1. Look at the third row. The probability is 1 eighth, the payoff is 8. Probability times the payoff is 1. Fourth row is 1 16th times 16, which is 1. Next row is 1 32nd times 32, which is 1. Next row is 1 64th times 6. Okay, so every one of these things is going to be 1. Well, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to see that if you add an infinite number of 1s together, you get infinity. That's what I wrote here. So the expected value of this game is infinity. In other words, if we wanted to use expected value as an economic theory of how people value lotteries, then our prediction would be that if somebody offered to play this game with you, you would give them every penny you have for the chance to play this game. You would sell all your possessions for the chance to play this game. Now, people don't really do that. Uh, in the real world, actually nobody, nobody's prepared to offer somebody a chance to play this game because the potential payoffs are, are big. But, but you can offer to play a similar game in which, um, in which there are a finite number of rows, let's say 10 rows. Um, and people pay a lot, are willing to pay a lot less than their expected value. And so that's, okay, so this is the second reason why we need to go beyond expected value to develop an economic theory of how people think about and, and value uncertain situations. And the theory that we're going to use to replace expected value is going to be called expected utility. And that's where we'll start on the next video.